Welcome back. So we've been talking about the singular value decomposition, one of my all-time favorite matrix decompositions, the SVD. And what I'm going to tell you about now is this extremely powerful uh, modification of the SVD called the randomized SVD. Okay. So generally speaking, we apply the SVD to high dimensional data in a matrix X, really, really high dimensional measurement data, where we think that there is some low rank or low dimensional structure, some patterns, some dominant patterns that exist in the columns and in the rows of this data matrix that we can mine out and reduce the dimension of, of this matrix and the representation. And if that structure does exist, if the SVD was a good idea in the first place, then we can often get away with doing this randomized singular value decomposition based on emerging techniques in randomized numerical linear algebra, high dimensional geometry, uh, and random matrix theory. So some beautiful mathematics has been coming up over the last couple of decades that is driving a new paradigm in how we compute uh, quantities in linear algebra. Kind of computational linear algebra is changing because of this randomized linear algebra and the randomized SVD. So I'm going to walk you through this Jupyter notebook to show you kind of how you would do this, uh, this randomized SVD. Now remember, if I have high dimensional data, extracting these low dimensional patterns can be very useful. It can, is kind of a compression, an information compression. But at the same time, computing it might be quite expensive in terms of, of CPU time if this is a massive data matrix. And that's what this randomized SVD is going to help us with, is giving us the same kind of uh, accurate and efficient representation of the data, but in much less computational time. Okay, so this is um, this is all from uh, this this data book uw.com. You can download the code. Uh, you can download the examples. This is from our book, Data Driven Science and Engineering. And in this code, what we're going to do is first we're going to define this randomized SVD uh, function. Okay, so. Basically, what you would normally use the SVD function for, now you can use this randomized SVD. And then we're going to apply it uh, to a high resolution image to make sure that it doesn't mess anything up. Okay? So there's a math version of this lecture. Uh, the previous lecture was just kind of the math of the randomized SVD. Here's the code. And so you'll remind yourself that this randomized SVD. Uh, on a matrix X, you need to know what your target rank R is, how many columns of, of U and V and sigma you want to pull out. That's R. Q is what we call the, the number of power iterations. I'll talk about that in a minute. And P is the oversampling factor. So for now, you can kind of forget about Q and P. I'll talk about those in a minute. But the basic idea of the randomized SVD is that you take your original data matrix X, uh, let's let's draw this actually pictorially. Your original data matrix X, and you multiply it by a random projection matrix P, so that what you get out is kind of a tall, skinny matrix Z. And this random projection matrix P could be uh, could have R columns, where R is the target rank. That's kind of the simple version of the story. And with high probability, Z will have the same kind of dominant column SVD as X. It'll have some of the same features in the column space. It'll, it'll represent the column space of X. They'll have similar spans. Now, this oversampling factor P, oftentimes we find that it's uh, this is capital P. Often we find that it's useful to sample a few more columns of x, p more columns, where p is a small number, 5 or 10, and we get a better uh, sketch of the column space of x. So that's oversampling. And then what we do is we compute the qr factorization of z to get an orthogonal basis, an orthonormal basis for this column space. Uh, that's this qr here, very simple. Then what we do is we take x and we project it into that QR, that Q subspace uh, to get this Y matrix, which is very, very small, rank R or R plus P. And then we do the SVD of Y, of this Y matrix, and we use that SVD to estimate the SVD of X, to get the U, the sigma, and the V of the original X matrix by computing the SVD of a really, really, really small matrix Y. Okay, That's the basic idea. Uh, power iterations would essentially mean that if 
if the singular value distribution of x doesn't decay fast enough, maybe we multiply x by x times x transpose a few times, and that'll make the singular values look, uh, look like they drop off faster. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but that's what this little code here in the middle is doing for power iterations. Long story short, you know, SVD is a one-line Python command. Randomized SVD is just a few more lines. It's like 10 lines, not much more complexity, but it's going to allow us to approximate this, this rank R decomposition much, much faster, okay? And with very little loss in accuracy. In fact, uh, you can get tunable error bounds as a function of Q and P. So you can select those so that you can get a, a specified accuracy in your, in your model. So what we're going to do is we're going to read in an image uh, of the planet Jupiter. I'm going to plot the high resolution image of Jupiter. We're going to compute the deterministic, the regular SVD of rank 400. We're going to plot that next to it. So the rank 400 approximation using the expensive SVD. And then we're going to compute the same rank 400 approximation using our fast, efficient, randomized SVD. Okay, so the target rank is 400. I've kind of pre-selected that. I know that that's enough rows and columns to get a good representation of Jupiter. We're gonna do one power iteration and have an oversampling factor of five. We're gonna have five more columns in our sketched matrix than 400, which is not, an ex not that much of an extra cost. Uh, we're gonna go from a 400 column Z to a 405 column Z. And then we're gonna use those SVD approximations to reconstruct the planet Jupiter. And this is what it looks like. So you can download this code and run it on your own and, and kind of zoom in and see what everything looks like. But what you'll find is that you really can't tell the difference between these three pictures. So this is the original image, this is the deterministic SVD of rank 400, and this is the randomized SVD of 400. And in all of them, you can see all of the little details. You can see the, um, the, the great red spot, the kind of uh, Kelvin Helmholtz instability behind it, and all of the features. So very little loss of accuracy here, but the randomized SVD is way, way faster. OK, good. So the last thing I want to show you is illustrating kind of the use of power iterations. Again, the uh, randomized SVD is relying on the fact that your singular values decay really, really rapidly so that you can approximate the dominant ones and not have them be contaminated by the low energy ones. But oftentimes, your singular values will look not as low rank as you want. They'll decay more slowly than you want. But if you take the matrix X times X transpose times X, they'll decay a little bit faster. And if you take that squared times x, they'll decay a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And so the exponent here is called the, the number of power iterations, this q. And you get to select q based on how fast you want your singular values to decay. That will directly factor into the error uh, of your approximation of this randomized SVD. Now, these power iterations are pretty expensive. Oversampling, not that expensive. Power iterations are pretty expensive because you have to pass through your big data matrix a couple of more times every time you do this power iteration, okay? And so if your data is massive, like Google data, Facebook data, even doing a single pass through all of that data might be massively expensive. And so power iterations can be quite expensive, but they do dramatically improve uh, kind of the error scaling of this algorithm. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to cook up a random matrix, a thousand by hundred matrix. And so its singular values will look kind of like this straight line, it's just a random matrix. And what I'm going to show you is that by running through these power iterations, one, two, three power iterations, we're going to massively steepen the decay of those singular values, which is going to make our randomized estimate much, much better. So again, here's the original deterministic SVD. Uh, with, with no power iterations, that's just the, the slope of the singular values. And as you apply even a single power iteration, this red curve has a much, much steeper drop off in the singular values. And applying additional, additional power iterations, Q2, Q3, Q4, you see that you're driving the slope down so that your system looks like it's lower rank because you're, you're kind of, uh, you're driving this, uh, the singular value spectrum down. Okay, so there are, are whole books and 50-page and papers written on the randomized SVD. This is a deep, 
uh, interesting topic of current research in computational linear algebra. Lots of the brightest minds in the field are working on, on this problem. So, you know, this 10 minute video is about as shallow as you can get. But I just wanted to introduce you to this concept, show you how easy it is to actually code up and start using, and hopefully get you excited about actually, you know, learning more about this and maybe contributing to uh, the current state of the art of these new randomized techniques in linear algebra. Okay, thank you.